1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9-11 through 11. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then, it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. Short verses, nevertheless rich, full with meaning. And so let's jump into it. Uh, grammatically, we start out with the very first word, for, which means uh, that Paul is uh, building, establishing, moving forward an argument. And if we remember what came in verses 8 through 11, Paul there was talking about the gospel, and it ended with saying that he was born untimely. Born untimely. Meaning that though he had seen the resurrected Christ, or it might say abnormally, um, he was born after the rest of the apostles. He missed a chance to hang out with Jesus in his earthly ministry. Nevertheless, he was still an apostle. So we had the 12, and then there were others in the New Testament that could be called apostles. Uh, Barnabas and Paul were definitely two of them. Apollos, potentially a third. And so he's saying of them that I am the least of the apostles. Paul sees himself as the least of the of the apostles, the 12 plus maybe three. Um, but just a small group of people, he is one of them. He is one who has seen the resurrected Messiah. He has been sent out for the building of the church, but he doesn't believe that he even deserves to be called an apostle. So that's the first little, well, the first little statement is right here. The second is here. And the third is here. And this is all one unit right here. The first verse. I am the least of the apostles and I do not des even deserve to be called an apostle. We're going to go ahead and throw this here. Why are you the least? And why do you not even deserve to be called an apostle? Another grammatical word here, because I persecuted the church of God. And so if you're just kind of like looking at it, you've got three little units right here. Here's one, here's two, here's three. They're connected by three simple words, for, and, and because. And they make one very clear point, that Paul is the least of the apostles. He doesn't deserve to be called an apostle, and it's because... He persecuted the church of God. Now, I think it's easy to kind of misunderstand this and say, well, like, oh, maybe the other apostles deserve to be called an apostle. And obviously, Paul's not saying that. No one deserves to be an apostle. But none of the other apostles were persecutors of the church. And, and the way that Paul is talking here, we're just seeing that his sin is greater than the sin of the others. Um can people sin in, in more or less ways? And I, I would say that the answer is yes. I mean, Paul clearly says that um, that if you're guilty of one breaking one part, part of the law, you're guilty of breaking all of it. Absolutely, this is true. But, you know, when grace abounds, do we sin more so that there's more grace, right? He'll, he'll ask that question as well. So yes, I think we can sin more or we can sin less. And, and Paul... And, and, you know, this is on our kind of continuum of thought. So if this is like sin over here and holiness over here, you know, we're all living over here on the, on the pin of a needle and God is all the way over here. And, you know, the difference between us is, is minuscule. You can, you can barely see it if you were to compare us to God. But that being said, as we sin more, and what's even more important than whether or not we have sinned more, but, but in, what's really important is awareness as we become aware of our sin, there becomes the need for grace. And that's the whole reason for this first sentence. That um, great sin needs great grace. And you can see that in what comes next. He doesn't even deserve, he's an apostle. That's crazy. And he doesn't even deserve it. Why? Because he's persecuted the church of God. And then he goes into the next one. But, okay, new thought, 
but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Next statement, and his grace to me was not without effect. So let's just unpack that. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. This goes back to being the least of the apostles. There's no way for a persecutor to become the least of the apostles apart from, boom, you guessed it, the grace of God. Hence the port purpose of this kind of first sentence. Um, Susan, I, I have been given incredible grace that there was more grace needed to make Paul an apostle than, you know, maybe John or somebody like that. Um, and again, this, this more or less, when you're comparing humans to humans, you can kind of see it, but when you're comparing God to humanity, you, you don't see it. Those lines get erased. But, but Paul's point is that he has become aware. He has kind of perceived, perceived the reception of grace. And the more that we perceive the reception of our grace, the more fruit it will produce. More fruit, which we're going to see in a second. Which is why Paul's initial statement is so important. So important. He's the least of the apostles, doesn't even deserve to be called an apostle because he's persecuted the church of God. He's recognizing that he needs, needs, whoops, I don't know why I put two, needs grace. And then boom, God gives the grace and therefore he is what he is. And he's going to add to that. His grace to me was not without effect. So question again, what will be the effect of receiving grace from God? And he gives us the answer right here. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. I'm going to break that up into two statements again. No. So that's kind of our, our answer to this question of what's the effect? I worked harder than who? All of them. And who is all of them? Well, most obviously, it's the apostles. So Paul is happy to say that he's worked harder than Peter, James, John, or any other of the apostles. He has worked harder than all of them. And then this profound statement, yet. So now it's time to qualify this statement that he's just made. The yet is gonna kind of move in a contrary direction as that. So I've worked super hard. This is the effect of grace in me. So grace has produced, right? Grace produced hard work. Oops, hard work. So that's the, that next little unit here. Grace made hard work. And then the next one, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Yet not I. So even though he said, I worked harder, he's saying, nope, not I but the grace of God that was with me, with me, was with me. God's grace, this grace that made him what he is, the grace that saved Paul, continued to be with him in ministry, and it led to hard work. So subjectively, what does it feel like for Paul? It feels like I have received great grace, and therefore, I'm going to give God everything that I have gotten. I've got, I'm going to give God everything I've got. I'm going to work harder than any of them. And yet, as he works, he is very aware that this is not his work alone, but the grace of God that was with me. That God's grace isn't once and then disappears, that it continues to empower us. So it's grace that continues our, greatening, uh, our greater awareness of our need of grace. It's grace that, that enables, enables us to work hard. And so as Paul produces hard work because of the grace, he's still recognizing that this is a, an effect of the grace that is with him. And so we think about like all glory to God. That is what God is doing. He is giving grace, which 
leads to hard work and then back to more glory to God because we're recognizing that the grace also came from God. And then Paul finishes up with this final statement. Oh, sorry. Let me. So this next one, like God's glory, right? God's glory. And then the last one, whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach and this is what you have believed. So you got, again, three kind of statements. Well, we'll, we'll cut, it, cut it into two instead. That'll just be easier. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach. So this is what we preach, this little piece right here. That's verses one through eight. Remember, there are particularly three through eight. That's the creed, right? And he's saying that all the apostles, whether it is I or they, the apostles all preach the same message. This is the same message, and it's the gospel that we saw in verses 3 through 8. And this is what you believed, that key word from the first set of verses, that we believe, um, or sorry, that they believe, the Corinthians, believe the gospel. Remember that they've taken a stand on it, taken a stand. And now Paul is exhorting them to hold fast. So that last piece is that kind of reminder, reminder of the gospel. And what we're kind of left wondering is, why does Paul take this break from verse 8 and then kind of pick it back up in verse 11? Why do verses 9 through 10 here talk about Paul why is that why is that in there and the answer is kind of far-reaching but if you go all the way to the end of this to the end of this chapter you'll see that the resurrection leads the believer to stand firm and Paul's point here is similar is that grace equals um, hard work, <laughs> that it has an effect, particularly with Paul, it was hard work. But beyond that, it, it has an effect in us to strengthen us, to help us stand firm, to continue in the faith, to do all of these things. And so as long as we've believed this gospel, it, which includes obviously the resurrection, that we as believers will be able to stand firm to the end and we'll be able to stick with God and we'll be able to do all the things that he's called us to do. And so that's why you have this kind of little um, interpolation between uh, verses 9 and 10. A lot of people will say like Paul is defending himself, is defending his apostleship. And that will definitely happen in 2 Corinthians. But it doesn't appear to be happening here in these verses. Instead, what it seems to be is that Paul wants them to get to this place of standing firm and hard work. And he's using the gospel, right? And whether it's the resurrection or grace, that's the goal that Paul seems to have um, with these verses. Well, there you go.